Hello guys and welcome to my channel. So today I want to talk about something that is different from what we are used to talking about. I know that we talk a lot about Laravel on this channel, but today I want to talk about a very different framework. So that framework is called Phoenix, uh, depending on the pronunciation, but um, from where I come from, you find many people uh, pronouncing it as pronouncing it as phonics but then i looked at the pronunciation I, I see many people calling it phoenix so i'll call it phoenix so i'll talk about this framework called phoenix uh, first how did i get to know about this framework so many clients have been approaching me uh, wanting me to develop for them betting applications and some of them they been giving me uh, application betting application built in laravel or php so that i can either add features or uh, or do some customer uh, do some customization or do things like speeding up and stuff so the characteristics of these applications is that they have been some of them are very slow so they also always have problem to do with speed and now my question has always been how do i solve this uh the speed issue of course you can do uh, things like caching and stuff like you can actually look and see how you can speed a lot of application but then i did everything but it, the speed did improve but it was not satisfactory so um, since many clients have been approaching me with this, uh, with maybe the need of developing for them a betting application, some of them actually they get me from the Stack Overflow and maybe the online profiles. I know that there was, I it started one day when I was given the the task to to do the customization and a betting application, and since I was new to interacting with betting APIs, I did a lot of asking online. And so when they search for somebody to to build for them, maybe uh, there's not a lot of information about, let me start by this actually, there's not a lot of information online about developing a betting application, applications. So let's say you want to integrate APIs like Gapi.lol, or rather uh, casino APIs, if you search, you may not get a developer because I don't know why this area has very little developers. And also for you for you to develop a betting application, you really need to be experienced in doing that. So the questions that I asked when I was working on this application, since I was very new to working with the betting APIs, sports betting APIs, and also the casino APIs, um i did ask a lot of help online and so they get me through this uh this online question that i had asked when i was developing that application so a lot of people have approached me on developing for them the betting applications so i started asking myself so how do i like how do i develop application using maybe which technologies do i need to use to develop application that are betting applications, sporting betting applications that are really fast and they are really uh, they are really fast and user does not have maybe to wait because sometimes you are loading a lot of games and you you really want them to be fast so that you don't disappoint the users so the the example site the example site was always this bet 364 it's very fast and uh, you can see it loads very very fast despite the fact that it does a lot of data and uh, but l l look at how it loads very fast so i wanted to know like which technologies did they use to to build this uh, this website here so i went to the stack tech uh, stack share actually to stack share detail and searched for the stack that was used to develop the the bet 364 and I got these languages. Here we have the JavaScript, Java TypeScript, CSS3, Golang, C++, Shell, Clang, Erlang, and Oc. 
So when I got here, I got interested in this language that I've never heard before. I started searching for these. Most of these I have heard of them, but then these two languages, the Erlang and the Orc, I've never heard of them. So I wanted to know like which uh, which languages are they, which are which are the what are their features and stuff. So I researched or I clicked on I researched about this Erlang, a programming language. And when we go to the document, get to the documentation, the erlang.org, which is their website, you find that they start by asking the question, what is Erlang? And they are saying that Erlang is a programming language used to build massively scalable, first is massively scalable, soft real-time systems with requirements on high availability. Some of its users are in telecoms, banking, e-commerce, computer telephony, and instant messaging. So I continued doing research and found out that this is the language that was used to develop WhatsApp. And you can see WhatsApp handles billions of messages. Should I should say millions of messages. Uh, but it, it was developed with, uh, using this language called, called Erlang. So as I continued maybe digging into the, the, the language Erlang, because you can see that betting systems are most of the time real time. So you need, uh, for you to develop a betting system that is quite good, you really need to consider the real time functionality. So you can see it's provide the real time. And also you have a very uh, important feature here they are calling fault tolerance. So what about it? So if actually there is an Lang introduction video which was done by the three programmers who worked on it, uh, they did some uh, some video. I think everybody, <laughs> if you are interested in it, you'll have to watch that video. They call it an Lang movie. And they really talk about the problem they were trying to solve. Uh, so for example, it was actually it was by Ericsson. So it is at the company dealing with telephone and stuff. Uh, so there are, there are a lot of uh, problems, but then they wanted to solve um, many problems, including the fault, having a system which is fault tolerance. So maybe to talk about self to uh, fault tolerance in the summary is like the application, let's say that you are developing application with the PHP and uh, and maybe user are trying to interact with it and the error occurs. So when error occurs, uh, that error will block everything. Uh, but with Erlang, fault is that there are processes. So once there is a problem with one, that is the only thing that is going to be affected. Uh, but then all these other things are continuing to work normally, except that area that is affected. Maybe I can just say that in Lemon's language. So that's what they call fault tolerance. So that you don't want that, like maybe if one call fails, uh, others are going to, to fail because uh, the, system has, uh, the, the, the one error has caused uh, all the other services to stop. So this one, if one service is, is uh, affected, that is the only service that is going to be affected, but the others are, con are going to continue normally. So that is basically what we call uh, fault tolerance in Erlang. So while I was continuing to do research on Erlang, I came across another language. It is called Elixir. So Elixir is the language, is like a child of Erlang, like a modern Erlang, because Erlang, I think it was built in 1980s. Uh, it's very old. But then now Elixir, the modern, I think it was built in 2010, if I'm 2012, if I'm not, if I'm not wrong, 2010, around there. And it was built to improve on top of Elixir. So actually it uses the, not Elixir, I mean, it, it was developed on top of Erlang. So it is like a child of Erlang or improved version of Erlang. And still, the good thing with it is that you can still use Erlang. You can still call Erlang methods in it. And also, this is a functional programming language. Um, and you can see that we are actually, uh, where we are right now, we have been in the, doing the object oriented. But now, um, most actually most programmers are moving towards the functional programming because now the, the functional programming is like the, now the modern uh, programming paradigm that every program is required to maybe 
to look into and to be familiar with. So Elixir has a lot of, um, if you look at the advantages of Elixir, you can just, you just love it, actually you love it. And it's a very good language in my opinion. Okay, so I just want to bring the, the language discussions because actually they, they are, they are said to be like uh, holy wars. Uh, so in my opinion, it's a very good language, it's very fast. Uh, maybe let me not talk about the advantages now, but I may do that in another video. Uh, but then we arrive to, so you just take the Erlang advantages and now you bring them to Alexia. Elixir. So when I read about Elixir, uh, I maybe was considering if maybe the applications, if I were to build application using Elixir, uh, will I maybe will I start from scratch or maybe there's some sort of a framework like Laravel that I could maybe use uh, so that I can just um, develop on top of a framework. And that is when I came across this framework called uh, Phoenix. Um, this from are called Phoenix. And I'll say that Phoenix has the best, in my opinion, it has the best docs that I ever have seen. Uh, but then it also depends with you. Uh, but then uh, I'll also say that uh, there are very few resources in terms of videos that you'll get talking about the uh, both Elixir and Phoenix because Actually, these are new, uh, they are new technologies, so you not get a lot of resources online. So if you are somebody who is used to maybe learning using the videos or maybe tutorials, you are going to get a lot of problems. Uh, but then I'll say that documentation is really good both for both Elixir and Phoenix. Now, in this video, let me just try maybe take you through the, I did not find a lot of video, actually I've been reading about it for some time. I'm actually, I'm equally new to the Phoenix framework, but I've been doing research for the last one week and I really loved it. Um, in this video, I'm going to do like a hello world of the Phoenix uh, framework application and we really love it. Uh, I found out that for Ruby developers, it will be very easy for you to get started with the Phoenix because actually the person who developed Phoenix uh, framework was and he was a programmer, he was a, a Rails, a Ruby and Rails programmer. So he copied a lot of syntax, um, important by a lot of syntax from the how Ruby and Rails work. But I, I've never done a Ruby, uh, Ruby and Rails framework. So I, I came from the, I come from the Laravel ecosystem, and uh, found that I was now trying to figure out like how the Laravel framework works and how the Phoenix framework works. Uh, but if you continue reading and maybe comparing the two frameworks, you'll get to a point where they click and uh, you'll just see like they are almost equal because the features that are in Laravel in terms of uh, the MVC implementation are also the, the same way, a bit different, but actually you'll just understand if you've been programming in an, in an MVC framework for quite some time. So. Let's get started Started and see if maybe we can... Uh... Okay, I did not talk about the speed. Why Phoenix framework? The most important thing that you need to talk about is the speed. Now, Phoenix is really, it's a very fast framework. Uh, it is faster, I think, in my opinion, it is faster than Django, than Laravel, and very many web frameworks that you are using today. So it has a lot of advantages. And it has also, uh, there's something called Live View which helps you to come up with a live uh, functionality or real-time functionality without even using a front-end JavaScript, JavaScript framework like let's say Vue or React. Uh, you can see here somebody says there was a discussion between the Django versus Phoenix and the guy says that Phoenix should be fast at least by default and it's better it's better choice for apps and that require concurrency, streaming, real-time collaboration, long-running services. However, Django is more established. There are a lot of jobs, books, and tutorials. So this is another thing. Uh, if you want to learn a framework to get a job, I don't think, in my opinion, that Phoenix will be one of the options you should, you should take. Uh, but then if maybe you built a lot of applications for clients and 
uh, sometimes they you you can define the technologies to use uh, i think you should consider maybe learning phoenix it's a very good framework in my opinion so let's stop the stories and see the maybe implementation of the of phoenix uh, application so let's let me open a folder i have a folder called um, i have a folder called phoenix no i have this folder called elixir so in this folder i am going to create a new application and uh, that is a phoenix application i'm not going to go through the installation stuff forgive me for that but i will look at that later maybe if i i maybe decide that i'll be doing tutorials in, in phoenix there are not a lot of tutorials online about the phoenix framework so let me just open the terminal and the first thing i'm going to create a new phoenix application so it has a package called mix it is like a task runner take it for example if you are programming laravel it's like artisan so if you want to create a new application do a, a mix phx or phoenix dot new and then the application name so the application name i'll call it hello okay and you just hit enter and now the the mix is going to install a new uh, a phoenix application so if you want to install dependencies you can do it, yes but again you can choose no and install them uh, later so it takes takes some time to install uh, the dependencies but it is, uh, it's just going to be done so for the time being let's open as it installs you can see there's this folder called hello here so let's just open that folder and open it in a code editor like code editor is the vs code so our application has already been installed so what you need to do you can see that they give you instructions here start your phoenix app with mix phx dot server or you can also start it in uh, in interactive mode in using the ix dash s mix ph X dot server. So let me use this first command. So first thing you have to cd or to change directory into the directory of the application, which is hello. And then after that, we'll just do mix mix phx dot server. So that is equivalent to running the server. But now you find out that you have uh, errors, and the errors are saying that uh, we have authentication fail Postgres problem. So that is the problem with connecting to the database. The application is not able to connect to the database. Okay. So there is what we call Ecto. That is Ecto is the is like the ORM uh, package for for uh, for Phoenix. So this is like eloquent in Laravel. So what you want to do is to to create the database to do this so that it can migrate all the in the table so maybe establish the, the 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 database connect to the database and maybe migrate the table that uh, the default tables so for us to do that there are things we need to do we need to go inside the the depths not the depths configuration and then depths.ex and then we need to change here you can see the tell the default username of postgres and the password i actually did the password um, that is as my password and then i'll just save that after saving that i'm going to clear and i'll do mix actor dot create so that is it is going to migrate all the the tables to the database so actually the good thing is that it creates for you the it creates for you the table you can see the database to create for you this database i mean i mean it creates for you the database 
Yeah, now you can see it tells the database for hello repo has been uh, created. So since that has been created, so what you just need to do to run the application is mix phx dot server. And now you can see it has given you now these are the endpoints. So this is the endpoints. You can just copy that and it is waiting, watching for changes. So let's go and look at how it looks like. So let's just go here and paste that URL and hit enter. And there you go. Now this is our brand new uh, Phoenix framework home page. So you can see it also gives you the what you call the live dashboard. So you can see here it will monitor the, the application statistics. If you go to the live dashboard, you can see it gives you the Elixir version, the Phoenix version, the, 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 the dashboard version. You can tell you the memory and every statistics of the your machine statistics. Okay, so let's just go back to the application home page. And now let me do explain let me explain the, the folders first so you can see that you have the build the underscore build directory so that is the directory for a, a compiled artifact so most of the the compiled code is going to be to leave that there so you can just call it like anything that has been compiled is going to to, to be to live here so this directory actually it's uh, it is every time you run it is it is actually created by the mix. Mix is like compose. They call it like composer uh, or uh, dependency management. Um, dependency management. Uh, it acts as a, a dependency manager for for Phoenix and also Elixir. So it is a dependency manager is going to to uh, when you run it is going to output that folder. To create that folder. Okay. Now let's move to to this. These assets, let's leave this first. So this assets directory, I'm going, I'm going through the, 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 the directions that are, um, are very important that are explained in the, in the docs. So this assets directory, it has your uncompiled assets. Okay, you are like raw assets. So for example, if you have your CSS, a style dot CSS, dot SCSS, or you want to write here CSS, which is going to be compiled and JavaScript which is going to be compiled and given out uh, as compiled JavaScript. You are going to put those assets in this assets directory here. And then once they are compiled, they are going to be output in this folder called, uh, uh, called, they're going to be output in this folder. You can see you have the static here and you have assets. Okay, so the compiled assets are going to be output inside this asset here. And also here is where you place, let's say that you are working with a framework, let's say a bootstrap framework, and you have files, uh, like that framework already has, uh, has CSS has already been written and compiled. So you basically don't place those files here, you basically place them inside this, this, this pre inside the static folder there. And then, so let's move from there to config. So the config folder, it has all your configuration. As you can see, you have the, the, conf, the main configuration file. And then after the main configuration file, you have the dev. So the default mode of the application when you are, when you are working on it on the local or so local machine is going to be the, the development uh, mode. So that is why uh, we did the configuration here in the day. By default, it uses that as the default configuration. Then you have the production and all these other. All these are are modes, application modes. Um, so configuration for different application modes. And then we have the depths. So you can see that if we open the depths, it has a lot of folders. It looks like not modules or it looks like mod, not modules or vendor directory in PHP. But basically, this is all the the dependencies that you have installed using Mix are going to live in this depths directory. So the dependencies that are in, are in Mix dot script, EXS means Alexa script. 
So all those dependencies that are here, you can see all of them here. You can see Phoenix, you can see Phoenix Hector, Hector, all these. If you look very well inside the these depths, you find that all the files that the files for this dependencies, the or the, for these packages are stored inside the depths directory. So it is equivalent to node modules in JavaScript or Node.js or or vendor in PHP. It carries the dependent files or the package that the packages that are in this mix that access. And now we have the lib. So the lib, this is the folder that you are going to spend a lot of your time in there. Okay. So the lib directory is divided into two. We have the hello and the hello web directory. Inside the hello, this is what the, your business, the, the business logic of your application live. So for example, the, you can see we have the repo. So the repo is basically responsible for the, for the interaction in the database. So the repo is like, you can call this where the model, the hello here carries the model part of the MVC, okay? So just know that that the hello here it carries or it carries the the business logic of your application. So the 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 the, the functionalities for interacting with the database they live inside this hello uh, hello folder. And now when you come to hello web, here is now where the 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 view and the controller lives in this elixir and in this phoenix uh, framework application so your controller logic you can see our controllers here we have the template so interesting thing about phoenix is that it divides views and templates so you can see that in a, like if you are a laravel developer you can see that when you are in a controller you basically return view but then uh, the difference with phoenix is that in the controller, I will instruct the, the controller after doing this logic thing, it instructs the view. We have the view. Okay, you can see views are here. It instructs, so for example, page view. You can see this is the home page. For the, home, the page that we just saw, you can see it has a view uh, with the name, the name space of hello web. Okay, so it instructs, uh, this view instructs, if we go to the controller, you'll find there we have the page controller. And it instructs that controller. It's the controller instructs the view. So if you have, for example, hello control, the page controller, it assumes by default that you have a view called hello view. And it is going to instruct that view to render this HTML file here. We'll talk about that later. So you can see now controllers live in the controllers folder. The templates live in the templates folder. And then the views, they live in the views uh, folder. And apart from that, apart from the carrying the, M, uh, the view and controller part of MVC architecture, it also has uh, various files. For example, you have the endpoint. So this endpoint file is very important because it is where the request hit, hits first in a Elixir application. The request, when your request comes to your application, it hits this endpoint first, and it is then piped to, to the router. We we'll look at the router file, and then from the router to the control actions, and from the control actions to now the views, okay? So we'll talk about that. So that is about these endpoints, very important. Now we have the, the getx. The getx it has everything to do with the translation or internationalization of your application. So if you want to do a multi-language application, this file will be very important. Will be very important for you. And now we have uh, we have this. We have this router. It's this is very important. This router is very important because it is the routing and it's the routing file so all the routes for example you know web.php if you are a laravel developer so this is the example it is equivalent of web.php where you define your routes by default and you can see actually the the syntax for defining those routes are a bit different you can see uh, you may see things there that you may not understand uh, for example, you can see the pipeline browser and have a lot of things there, a plug and everything. You'll understand that. 
uh, they're not very hard actually those are basically like mid lawyers that the the mid lawyers that your uh, request has to go through the request data has to go through for you to hit the the controller and be sent to the, the, the get the data and be sent to the, the views and the layouts and the templates so actually let me talk about this for the time well, i know that we have the telemetry telemetry is all about the the static the application static actually the package that helps you to work with the, the statistics and then we have now we have the hello web and then we have now the corresponding files like we have the hello web here just and then we have the the hello here okay i can see they tell you that hello keeps the context that define your domain and business logics actually it, it has everything to do with the with this folder hello you can see they are named the same business logic or the, the database part of the application and the same with the the hello here you can see they have told you uh, the, uh, the the entry point for defining a web interface such as controllers, views, and channels. So this one has everything to do with this hello web uh, folder. But now let's go to the prove. I think I talked about this and I said that you are the translation part and also the the compiled assets they will leave here. The test is basically for testing your application. The git ignore everybody is familiar with that. Then you can define here the file that you want to ignore when you are pushing your application to the to GitHub and so on. So let's look at also this mix.exs or Elixir script. This is very important. And this file is equivalent to composer.json or or package.json in JavaScript, where you define the packages the package versions you like to install in your application and when you install you run npm install it is going to install those packages in your application so you can see for example the packages that are installed here are defined here and of course you have composer.log and mix.log so here the the locked version of your of the dependencies or packages are inside here so basically that is in summary that is the folder and then the, that is the that is what goes on in all of these folders that I've just uh, gone through. And now let me, let us just go through maybe Hello World application and see. So you can see that we'll go back. It first starts with the router. Okay, not we we'll go to the router file. So we go to the lib, and then if we go to the Hello Web, we have the router.ex. Okay. So you can see, for example, let's use the example of this page here. Let's use the example of this home page. And you can see that when you go to home page, it serves this page here. How does that happen? So as we said, the entry point of the request in this Phoenix application is the endpoint.alexia. Okay, basically Phoenix is an Alexa application actually. So because every code you write is Alexa code. Now a request has two things always. It has the method or the verb, and it has the the path that it, that it has to be matched to. So for example, if we build this page, we are basically sending a get request. So the get is the verb, and the path is the home page. Basically, it is this. The path is just this okay it's like the home page so it is going to look at the router it, it is going to go through the endpoint and then it is forwarded to the router and in the router they are going to look for the path that matches that <clears throat> which is this one here and then it is going to see that it has to use the page controller and it has what we call action now this is very important uh, in 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 elixir you don't call them uh, methods of course they are called controller action they are basically functions so because this is a functional programming language controllers are modules with various functions there we'll look at this for example if we look at this as if we look at this page controller let me just search page controller a uh, page controller you find that it is a module it is a module and you look at that 
uh, but then it has uh, this method or a function actually that this function here that renders at uh, this index.html now let's assume that you want to add another route and you want to call that route hello uh, so let's just copy this and paste that and we'll call it hello controller hello controller but then the route is going to be hello um and the method we can change either change this or just leave it so if i save this we are going to get an error if we try to visit that part so let's let's try to visit hello and we get an error function hello dot web hello controller in it is undefined module hello web is not available it says that that controller is not defined and you can see that it has been highlighted here so after defining this we know that this is the path the verb is get the path is hello and then the controller is hello controller and the method is index so what we need to do after that we need to go to the controller and create that controller so this is how it is created hello underscore controller dot ex so ex stands for elixir now we have created there now let's start by defining module you do def module and then the module name so it is hello web okay this is very important hello web dot hello controller and i'll tell you why do so this is like a module we are basically let me tell you this just like the namespace so where is this controller located it is located inside the hello web into the hello web directory so where is the hello web directory the hello web directory is here okay it's here the hello web so that is like just the namespace so hello web and then let's try just to define that uh, maybe def index let's just try to define that method called index and in in elixir functions they first take the first parameter as here like here we take the first parameter the connection and then you have the params okay the params if you are going not going to use you have to uh, to to have an underscore so you can see that you have the you start with the underscore and then params okay because we are not going to use this param so we are not expecting any parameters to be sent there okay and then what we basically do we do we render let's render a uh, first connection and then let's send a file called index dot h okay it has to be double quotes actually index dot html so let's save that so now we have our controller right and you can see right away that one has been uh, highlighted and it is telling you that compiler error compile error and define function render so why did i do this i did this purposely because i wanted to, to tell you that you are using you have to import the controller method here so you have to do use you have to use a uh, hello web hello web and then we have to use what we call controller so you have to use controller we have to import controller okay for our function for our for this method we have to import the, the controller because this render method is the best controller uh, function okay so you have to import it here otherwise you're going to get an error so we've done that now you can see that now that error has disappeared uh, but now what next now we said that if you have a controller called the hello controller it also expects you to have a view okay because i said that phoenix or phoenix separates view from templates okay so you have to go to the views here and create another a view for this hello controller called the hello hello view so we create a new file and we call it hello underscore view dot ex or dot elixir. now here we do the same thing 
def module is going to be hello web dot hello view do uh, so here we, we basically do we don't add a lot of things that basically use hello web and then we import view so we have to import view and that is all you have to do in this view uh, in this in this view uh, file but then still if we go back and refresh you can see you still have a lot of errors cannot render this hello web tell you please define matching okay you can see that we have uh, we have that error right so what we need to do and um, in the different fine so what we need to do we need to now define a template for it so it also it also assumes that if you have a hello view we should be having a template called hello so we can see that we have the page view and you have a page, you have a folder called page here so what you want to do is let's just create here a new folder we'll call it hello and then inside this hello we are going to create a new file it's going to be called index.html. Dot that I don't know how to pronounce it. Dot h e e x. So, like in Laravel, like in a framework, if you are familiar with Laravel, you know that you have blade templating engine. Here we use what we call e e x. So it is called like HTML plus Elixir. Actually, it is in the documentation. I don't know how why I have forgotten that. And you can see once you've created that. Once you have created that, you can see that error disappears, but there's nothing that is rendered. You can see there's nothing you've done here. So let's try to render H1. Okay, let's try to, to write there H1. Just know that EEX, EEX is a templating engine for Phoenix, for Phoenix framework. So let's just do H1 here and close it. And just do welcome to Phoenix. Welcome to Phoenix uh, framework. So let me just do that and save it. And once I save it, you can see it compiles. And here we have it now. It says welcome to Phoenix framework. Now that is actually the hello world <laughs> okay hello world you can change even you can even change it to hello from phoenix framework uh, but then you can see how this framework is really good um maybe i'm addicted to laravel i have i don't have any problem with that i'm also i also use a laravel a lot uh, but then i think this framework is really good i'm not saying that you leave laravel but um uh, you can learn both you said that you have to to learn one framework uh you can just learn elixir if you want um it's it i'm not a brand ambassador for the for the for elixir or phoenix but i really love this uh, framework you can see and there are a lot of things that we could do um we could pass we could pass uh we could pass variables there if we wanted to and the in the router here if you wanted maybe to pass a variable let's say you want to pass a variable called name okay so we can, we can just do we can just do name like that so now that you have name um now that we have name if we go back to the hello controller it expects now that we have what that we should have the name there so how do you define it define the that there so basically do this so not that <laughs> actually we did this we use that basically it is a map there's something called a map but i don't know if you can i don't know if how I, what i can compare to but uh, we can just do name and then we do name 
and that's all uh, but then now we have to pass this uh, third parameter here okay so you can just do name name that way and then so after doing that we can go back to that you can go back to the now the view the view the view file not the view file the the, in, the hello and then we can basically echo, echo their name so this is how we do it this is how we do it so you can just do add name and then uh, we close it so basically that is how we echo a name and that's in the eex so let's say now uh, you can see that this route is not found because we change so let's say now uh, we want to do hello and then pass the assignment and you can see right there we have it welcome to phoenix simon so uh so basically you can you can pass parameters it's very good it's a very uh, good framework um it may be easy but i have learned it for some time but then it's not hard to understand but then i'll recommend that you first start with elixir learning elixir programming language before you come to the phoenix uh, phoenix framework uh, there are a lot of things and uh, maybe i may continue doing these tutorials i know there are very little resources on phoenix i've tried to do a lot of uh, research on youtube especially on youtube i'll get videos that are the latest i think is four months old and those are not talking about nobody's talking about the framework in general like for a beginner to get started everybody assumes that everybody is uh, everybody watching the tutorial is uh, an advanced uh, or maybe you have to tell that are uh, up to two years old now you can see that this is uh, version 1.6 if you get a tutorial that is like version 1.3 it is not going to help you a lot because you're going to encounter errors there is a video I was following, uh, a video I was following and it, it had a lot of errors. So I had to, to abandon it and start learning by myself by reading the documentations. So thank you so much. And maybe if, if you are not subscribed to my channel and like my content, uh, consider subscribing. Thank you so much. Let's meet in the next video.